welcome back to my channel. My name is Katherine and today we're going to be talking about libraries. Let's get started. A library is made up of useful reusable code. This could be classes, functions, procedures, scripts, configuration data, and more. A library could also let you interact with the OS or contain a collection of mathematical or logical operations or do something else. Let's take a look at an example. Here, I'll be using JDoodle, which has online editors and compilers for many different languages. We'll be using the C compiler, so I'm going to select C here. And that's because the C language has many different libraries. We're going to delete all this code. Now, in this tutorial, we'll be using the math and IO input-output standard libraries. To use these libraries, we're going to need to include or import their header files, which include variables and function declarations, among other things. If you're interested in header files, just leave a comment down below and I'll make a more in-depth video on it. To import the header files for these libraries, we're going to write hashtag include stdio.h and then, so that's standard IO, and then we're going to do the same thing but for the math.h, and so importing those header files. We're going to start off by using the printf function, and that's going to allow us to print to the console. So to do that, I'm going to use the main function, and so this is where like all of your body code is run, this is where everything gets run for the program, and we're just going to write printf and then a little hi there message. We'll go ahead and execute this. In this printf function, this is declared in the standard IO library. This is declared in that header file. And so if I take that out and try to execute, we're going to run into errors because although printf is actually built into the C programming language, we still need the declaration from the standard IO header file. You have to have that declaration in order to have access to that printf function. Now, let's say we wanted to print out an inputted name. We could declare a variable, and so in this case, we'll do a char array. We'll call it name and give it 20 slots. And then we could use the scanf function from the standard IO library to read input from the user and save it in this variable, this name variable. To do that, we can go scanf and then go ahead and scan for the name, get that user input from the user, and then use it inside of our print function, which in this case, we'll do percent %s, and then do the name, which is this case. For our inputs here, I'm gonna put my name, Catherine. We'll hit execute, and there we go. We get hi there, Catherine, in the console. Again, if I took out the standard IO header file, then I wouldn't have access to scanf or printf, and I wouldn't be able to use those functions. Now, what if I wanted to remove the decimal value from a number? For example, I wanted to change 12.6 into just 12. We can truncate the decimal value by using the trunk function in C. This function is declared in the math header file, so you'll need to make sure it's included before you try using these functions. But since I already have it included, I'm going to write int whole number, and in this case, the whole number is going to be trunk, and then we'll give it the value 12.6, and then we'll go ahead and print out that value to the console. We'll print out the whole number, and to print out integers, we do percent %i, and then we'll go ahead and put in our whole number here. And we have errors because I forgot the semicolon. And there we go, now we have whole number 12. And I could add a little backslash in, run this again, and there we have a new line. It's a little bit more formatted, looks a bit prettier. Again, here, this chunk function, it's declared in the math.h file, the math header file. And it's essential that that header file is included if we wanna use that function. Now you can always write your own piece of code to take out that decimal value or convert you know, 12.6 into just 12 into that whole number. But this can be time consuming and it might not be the most efficient process overall. Now there are a lot of C library functions and many live under different header files. Here are just a few of those header files and what types of functions they contain. 
In software development, most programming languages have libraries, but they might come under different names, such as modules for Python or packages for Java. They are conceptually the same, but with different enforced naming conventions. The general philosophy behind libraries is that they allow for code reuse and provide access to some aspect of the hardware or software. You should use them because they have gone through rigorous testing and work. They have been optimized for performance and they are portable, meaning they work everywhere. So that's it for this video. If you want more technical tutorials, be sure to subscribe. And if you're interested in behind the scenes, check out my Instagram. There's some freebies down below and I hope you learned something new in this video. Thank you for watching and happy coding.